When it comes to tracking the way a virus circulates, researchers use many traditional methods such as contact tracing. And while that's important, it only gives a really narrow window into the transmission between a limited number of people. Dr. Frank McGeorge is here to show us how ep ep epidemiologists can get the 10,000 foot view on that spread. Viruses naturally mutate, often in small, unimportant ways. But every time a change occurs and the virus is spread to another person, the newly created difference links those two individuals. And by studying sequential changes, it's possible to follow a virus's travel across the country or the globe. The genetic code of the SARS-CoV-2 virus is made of roughly 30,000 base pairs, like words in an instruction manual that the virus copies every time it spreads. When the virus copies itself, errors naturally occur, but these mutations are generally inconsequential, except for the trail they leave. The value to these errors is that they act as a signature unique to the virus at that time. That signature is passed on to every descendant of that virus. Researchers have been sequencing or reconstructing the genetic signatures of different SARS-CoV-2 viruses around the globe, and by doing so, they have created an ancestral tree, showing how each successive change was passed on and where it branched with different mutations. Thinking of it like a family tree, when you see the same signature changes in different branches, you know they must be related. By mapping the genome of the virus that infected different people in different places at different times and matching signatures, we can infer relations. Here's an example that might help. Let's say a mutation occurred in China. We'll call it the orange mutation. And through genetic sequencing of virus samples in the U.S., that same orange mutation was found in Washington State and California. That suggests those two viral outbreaks are related. And because it was in China first, there's a good bet the orange virus was introduced through travel from China. Now suppose at the same time the orange mutation occurred, there was a different mutation. We'll call it the blue mutation. And through genetic sequencing, the blue mutation was found in China, Europe, Canada, New York, and Michigan. That would suggest there was a set of transmissions of the virus linking those places. We can't say for certain the order of spread, but we know they're related. Now that example is pretty close to what researchers believe may have happened. After its initial identification in China, the virus began to show differences as it traveled to different parts of the world. The signature of the virus identified in Washington state suggests it was directly imported from China. But the viral genomes of the SARS-CoV-2 samples from people infected in Michigan months ago are more directly related to the signatures also found in Canada and Europe, suggesting the virus didn't come to Michigan directly from China, but rather was imported from Europe. The Michigan signatures also have a relationship to viruses found in several other states. It's important to say, this only suggests a transmission relationship. It doesn't say in what direction the virus traveled. Now, honestly, this level of detective work is only possible because we can now sequence a virus's genome in a matter of days, which is absolutely remarkable. This is something that in the past was either unheard of or would have taken months or years. Now, if you want to check out the next strain data yourself, we'll put a link to it on clickondetroit.com. And finally, a quick shout out to Dr. Heather Blankenship at the MDHHS, whose lab is doing the genome sequences for the state of Michigan. Back to you.